Hello, my name is Hilary Garrett. NHS England is delighted to be leading the implementation of the Child Protection Information Sharing Programme. This programme is really important for us to be able to protect our most vulnerable children. One, it's a very good example of, of integration between health and social care. It's a good example of using a unique identifier, which is the NHS number, and that's, that's, that's very pioneering in terms of sharing between health and social care. Uh, it's, about, it's about sharing information. It, um, the forum was very concerned about safeguarding, and this is another system by which you would have increased assurance and safety for these vulnerable children. The benefits will be children who who are taken to different a &E departments by their parents for medical care, we will find them in a, you know, because we, as we know from history that um, if the parents went to hide uh, from their own local um, authority where they have taken the children for medical treatment, that is going to change because those children are going to be protected because when they access an a &E department, wherever they might access, that information will be uh, flagged up to the clinician that this child is known to a local um, authority and is subject for child protection plan. So in terms of protecting that child wherever the child might present or wherever the parent bring the child to for the medical attention, it's not going to be missed. You know, clinicians are going to be told straight away that a local authority uh, uh, is responsible for their child's safety. Tracy is a 19-year-old pregnant woman, resident in a hostel in Birmingham, who is receiving ongoing methadone treatment. Because of Tracy's drug problems, her unborn baby has been placed under a child protection plan. Tracy's friends in London are able to get hold of more methadone, so she decides to go and spend time with them. After taking too much methadone, Tracy becomes disorientated and wanders into a park, where she starts going into labour. Luckily, a passerby spots Tracy and calls an ambulance. Tracy does not tell the people providing her care that she is taking methadone. Without any knowledge of her situation, the hospital discharges Tracy and her baby. Tracy goes straight back to her friends and starts taking more methadone. Tracy continues to take excessive methadone and neglects her child, who is now in severe danger. The hospital had no idea that she was a risk to her child and the authorities in Birmingham have no idea that she's given birth. But if the hospital had the child protection information sharing system, things would have been very different. The moment that Tracy was admitted to the maternity ward, her NHS number would have linked into the child protection information sharing system. This would have informed staff that they must contact social services, who could then have intervened and helped Tracy and her baby. After helping Tracy get back to Birmingham, social services can help the newborn child and, if necessary, apply to the courts to have the child taken into care if Tracy is unable to care for him. Whatever happens in the long term, social services are engaged with the child and mother and are aware of the child's birth and the mother's whereabouts. Without the child protection information sharing system, the child would have been in serious danger. On the surface, we do have conversations, and I'm sure they happen internally and externally, and we have those conversations together about how we each perceive the other. And we will have discussions about people being precious about their information, about people being secretive with their information, and it probably would always be that children's social care would be more critical of their colleagues in health. I'm mindful of a scenario where I've gone to hospitals where a child has been subject to a pre-birth child protection plan and a decision has been made via the courts that that child needs to be removed to a place of safety. That's a very difficult scenario to be involved in and as a social worker going to a clinical setting, going to a hospital where the norm for my colleagues in health is that it's a time of joy it's a time of celebration because a baby's come into the world and then a social worker comes to burst that bubble of that magical time for that family. Now if my colleagues in health were more aware of information which in, probably had led to that decision making then it may make our relationship, using that as an example, 
we perhaps could work more effectively with each other and there wouldn't be this invisible barrier of one agency judging the other.